hopefully upload it. Um, I was telling Echo that we're going to start with her because um, she was the one that came into the Facebook group and asked the question. And it was like 1130 at my time. And I was like, oh, I have so much to say. And then I was like, I'm not going to sit here and type this on my phone. So I was like, let's just go live and talk about this because there's a lot of things I want to talk about. And thankfully she was cool with that. <laughs> a lot of people are like, no, I don't want to be on live. So um, can you just kind of, just to start with, tell us what your question was again or how it. Um, I just was looking for like, like marketing, um, like tips on like marketing yourself, um, especially as like a documentary photographer, um, like getting yourself out there, getting more clients. Um, that's pretty much what my question was like. Okay. So, and you, I think you had commented on there that you, this is like your first year in business. Yeah. So this is my first year in business. Um, and I'm going to be very honest. Like I have not done the best marketing. I've gotten most of well, I've, my three clients. <laughs> They're all like people right. that have followed me on um, Instagram or Facebook or so. That's awesome. So it, what's good about knowing where your clients have come from you know, that they found you on Instagram or Facebook is, you know, okay, I can still use that as a marketing channel. It means like, like for me, I'll just use myself as an example. I know the majority of my clients aren't on Instagram and Facebook. And so don't go look at my personal Instagram. The last time I posted was like probably a year ago, maybe more, which I shouldn't completely neglect it because the truth is, is once someone does find you, whether it be through a Google search or a referral, they are going to look and be like, oh, I wonder if they have an Instagram or, you know, you should have stuff on there. But in your case, you're saying, yeah, I know my clients or at least some of my clients have found me there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also the case of putting your eggs all in one basket. And so with marketing, what we have to remember is we have to kind of cast this wide net not so wide that we get off track with each thing we want to do. So it's not like you should start like 19 different marketing, um, you know, things at one time. You really focus on building up a couple and go from there. So um, I had also asked you if you had your website yet and you don't. So no. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> um, websites, I mean, they can take time to build up and also a lot of work to build up. Um, Melissa can attest to that. <laughs> we went, we worked through building up her website. Um, and what I will suggest though, is that needs to be probably the next step okay. in your mark in is like at least having something there. It doesn't need to be everything you want it to be to start with. It should just look nice, clean, professional, but a place to have your photos and what you offer and where you offer it. That's really important because a lot of people have a website and it's like, okay, but where are you located? <laughs> where, where, where can I find you? Um, or like Melissa was just saying, oh, she got contacted from Germany. And I'm thinking, wait, why, why is she getting contacted from Germany? But it makes sense. They're traveling there and mm -hmm. Uh, to where she's located and they were able to see, oh, look, there's a photographer in this area. Um, and that's another thing that's like a marketing thing. So for example, what helps with SEO is a part of marketing, right? And what helps with SEO and things like that is something like um, the DFP listing. So they, Melissa, just before we started streaming here, she said, oh, the German clients found me on the DFP listing. And a lot of times they might've even been able to find her without the DFP listing simply because having your website linked on other places is going to build up your SEO. And so you're going to come up higher on a search, right? So that's just like one little tip. Um, one of the biggest things though, that I think you'll need to do is because I think if I, I'm just trying to think back to the post itself, um, was that you had said, you kind of feel like no one knows what documentary is. And so that's why it's kind of been hard to market, right? Um, yeah, I feel like a lot of people that have like inquired with me to have a basic understanding of what documentary is just because I've been sharing my personal work for the last like year and a half. Um, so they have like an idea of what I do and like, but I don't think the general 
probably. area. Uh, like where I'm located, I don't know of a single other documentary photographer that like offers it as a service, you know? Right. Um, so I don't think the general public of the Omaha, Nebraska area knows what documentary photography is. Right. Okay. So in that case, there's a couple things. First, you should really leverage that, that in your area, you're like the only one that is kind of doing this thing. You can use that as a huge marketing point for yourself. And, um, they might not understand the word like documentary photography, but they will understand something like family photography for, I'm talking about for keywording for SEO, for example, or if you're putting um, flyers somewhere in a business or partnering up with something, um, as well as storytelling photography, where you can then go in and start describing what documentary family photography is, okay. right? Because people aren't going to be necessarily doing the search for those words, documentary family photographer. And even on my website, it's on the back, back end, like no one can see it on the front end, but I even have words like lifestyle photographer, et cetera. And they still land on my on my site because I keyed for those keywords just on the back end of some of my photos I'm uploading, like the metadata and all that good stuff. Um, you know, if they're searching that, I'm still gonna pull up for it simply because of whatever and then they see it and they're like oh this looks really cool and they get excited about that um with like using the words lifestyle do you feel like you have to do you feel like you end up at places though where you're like people are expecting like a more lifestyle issue or no because your work speaks enough to understand that's not exactly so i'm showing exactly what i shoot and it doesn't say anywhere on my website lifestyle it's just okay. getting them th there through that keyword search okay. um and then, you know, of course, initially, I think this is, we all deal with this, even if someone is coming upon a documentary family photographer, they still are like, oh, like they're looking for a lifestyle or they don't understand exactly what that means. And so our job is really to educate them through that process. And sure, sometimes I might have someone that is like, oh, actually I was looking for more, you know, this in this other direction. But a lot of times it could be, oh, I was looking for this other thing and now you've explained this and it sounds really freaking cool and I want what you're offering. So it's a matter of how you're phrasing it, but, or, you know, talking about it, clarifying it and the work you're showing on your website. That's what it's gonna boil down to. The other um, big thing there is like with getting all that set up is like I said, first you need a place for it to live. Website, right now you have Instagram that works as well, but you know, at some point I would start working on a website. And then um, from there, building out what your brand is. So when we talk about, um, and Melissa knows, it's like, <laughs> Melissa was in um, mentoring with me. And so she knows it's like this long kind of process of figuring out like, what is it that I'm doing for people that's different than any other photographer? And it can't just be the documentary aspect of it. For right mm -hmm. now, you could definitely leverage that because there aren't others doing it in your area, but at some point there will be. And so yeah. you need to really be able to like dig down and take a look at, okay, what, what is the impact I'm hoping, hoping to have on people through these photographs? Um, and what is it that they're leaving with, with these photographs? And one of the biggest things I tell my students is that it's really hard to sell the future. And when it comes to photographs, that's usually what people are selling. They're always using these words like um, your family's legacy, your family's history to last, last lifetime, right? And that's all future things. And it's great. And it's true. There's not, there was no lies about that. But if you can really hone in on what you're providing them presently and get clear on that, that is going to make a huge difference in people who actually do inquire and decide to book, right? Um, <clears throat> so going back to marketing though, um, typically I say build out your brand first because what happens with marketing is anything in your branding. So like your brand statements, your, you know, um, who you're interacting with, the types of clients you're trying to reach, um, maybe the businesses you're partnering up with, all of that is determined based on what your brand is. So like for me, obviously you can tell I have a potty mouth or whatever. So I'm not going to go and like hook up with this, like really posh, <laughs> like swanky place that is like uppity, you know, they want, yeah. I want to deal with businesses that are okay with me dropping a curse word here or there. 
um, they need to be okay with that. And my clients know that too, right? So, and some of them do not want anything to do with that. And some of them do. So, you know, it's kind of a give and take. So once you have that brand built out, there's these three phases of marketing that you need to know. And this is where I think people get really, um, God, kind of overwhelmed with the thought of marketing, because like I said, marketing is a long game. It's not something that's um, like, oh, I'm going to put out a, like a promotion and I'm going to get 10 clients tomorrow, right? It's a long game. And sometimes mm -hmm. like even me last week, I got an inquiry that from something that I did two years ago, like a marketing type. Um, well, what I did was I photographed, actually it would have been more than two years ago. It was three years ago now. Um, I photographed a um, field trip for my kids as kindergarten and just gave the pictures to the parents. And I like, you know, they could log in with their email address and download them and all this stuff. And here three years later, so they have contacted me, the like a family from there saying, hey, you photographed our kids at the field trip and we love the photos. And now we want to have family, like they want a full day in the life session. Mm -hmm. So that was three years ago. Um, granted, not all, not all marketing is going to be like that. It won't necessarily take two yeah. years. But just an example <laughs> of you can't discredit like every single thing that doesn't give you a result immediately. So the very first thing, the first step of marketing is getting people to know you exist and that you offer this. And that's the part where you have to get kind of creative. Um, the, then the next step after that is getting them to like you. And then the third step is getting them to trust you. So it's no like, and trust, right? So like, Hey, here I am. This is what I offer. Um, you know, this is why I do it. This is why it's going to benefit your family or benefit you. And then it's like, okay, that sounds interesting. Now I want to get to know this person a little bit better. Like, you know, what is this? So you have to build around your personality that they're liking you. You're nurturing that relationship. And then from there, it's like, it moves to this area of trust. Like, oh, I would spend money with this person because I trust them now, right? So it's, like I said, a long journey. So the very first thing you need to do besides the website is figure out how you can get people to know you exist besides Instagram. Okay. Um, it's, like I said, Instagram can be a great tool, especially if you're like the, the way, one of the best ways I've seen Instagram used is like, let's say you have a local park that you're photographing your kids at even, and then you post that photo on Instagram and you like, you know how you can do the location or whatever? Location that park, because then people in your area who are also locationing that park are gonna see that post, right? And might get curious by the photo, et cetera. So you have to be really strategic with how you're using Instagram. Okay. In order to get connected. And then, um, because that, the thing with Instagram is it's online. So anybody can be following you. It could be a bunch of other photographers. It mm -hmm. could be people, you know, across the world, you know, people that will never book a session, but they yeah. just like your work. And that's fun too. Yeah. But if, it, if you want to utilize it for um, getting clients, then you need to be strategic about how you're doing that okay. and figuring out like, what is the tag? So like in my, in my town, there's a tag that people use. It's Yenna city. Yenna is the name of my town. And then city, even though we're not really a city, they call it Yenna city. And so like, I know when I tag that, or if I tag, um, the park, the big park in the middle of our town, people see my posts and I always get, you know, new younger followers on that. Not necessarily my client, but I'm sure it would work for you. If you said your clients are fi finding you there. I have a lot of like, um, actually like university students from my town following me, which I think is really cute. And maybe one day they'll have kids and I'll, I can photograph them. So, but yeah, so like I said, the, the Instagram way and, um, and then getting offline. So start considering how can I show up and say, Hey, here I am. This is what I do. And one of the, the other big things I highly, highly suggest is business cards, even if it's super simple. I mean, it could be, you know, you can print business cards from Moo and have like alternating pictures on the back. So like pick your best 10 photos 
and get a pack of 50 and so, or a hundred or, you know, however many you want and just have those 10 photos alternating, you know, on each card. And the reason I say that is because we get into conversations with people, whether it be parents at our kid's school or like sports thing, or like my husband has gotten me so many clients because he keeps a stack of my cards in his wallet on his desk drawer or in his desk at work. And we have them in our glove box in the car. And if anyone's like talking about my husband's like, oh yeah, my wife's a photographer. You should check out her work and like hands my business card. And, you know, he's like out there doing this work for me. And then I can do the same thing. You know, when I'm out there, at least having that little piece to tell them where to find, find out more about you is going to make a huge difference. And then you can go even deeper with that by making, like I said, connections in your community, whether that be like, oh, I'm going to photograph a kid's music class. Or um, one of the partnerships that I made was like a family yoga place, which is like really funny because, um, I mean, I love yoga, but I'm, I'm never consistent with it. But I went and I told her, I'm like, I can photograph your yoga studio for you, you know, in some family work or whatever. And or the family's doing the class together and you can put the work on your social media and on your website. It's kind of like a trade, right? And I, so she had what, sorry, I always forget the word in English, like a point card families could purchase because kids get sick so often. She didn't want to do like, oh, you pay, per, you know, X amount per month. And this is how many sessions you get. You have like a card with like points and you can use them at any time because um, kids get sick and maybe you know, you paid for a month and couldn't make it. And it doesn't make sense. So what she does is depending on the size of the card that the family purchases with the points, they then get a um, gift certificate to use on a session with me. Oh, fun. Yeah. Which will be like, you know, a hundred bucks off product or like whatever it is, can, you know, use your imagination with that. Um, and then the other big thing is, and this goes along with getting people to like you and stuff is building up that um, email list and being able to send newsletters here or there, or, you know, being able to directly speak to your clients' needs and their wants. A lot of times we don't even realize what our needs are and wants are. You'll hear this all the time in marketing where people are like, speak to your clients' pain points. And we can think on like this surface level of like, oh, you, you know, they need family photos or they should have this, but a lot of times they don't even realize what their own point, pain points are. Yeah. And so we need to be able to figure out what those pain points are and, and how it is that we can serve them. I can't help you right now. Can you please wait? <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah. And so being able to speak directly to that and, and to, let's say when you're posting something on Instagram, if it's relatable, don't do like this, like fake authenticity where people are like, ah, my life's a mess. Like it's chaos here, but that's okay. Like if it's real stuff that's happening, like, okay, I just got my kid's haircut and he went and found the scissors and took a big chunk out of his bangs. Like stuff like that is relatable to people mm -hmm. and they're going to connect to that and, you know, think that's funny. So it could be anything like that. That's just an example. So when you're posting something, um, or putting something out there, whether it be a newsletter, a social media post, um, you know, or showing up somewhere, always ask yourself, like, why am I posting this? Like, what's, what do I hope to get out of this? Is it just to show a pretty picture? That's okay. But just be clear with yourself about that. And no, you can't have, you know, much expectations. You're going to get some likes, but likes aren't going to pay the bills. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, is it to nurture my audience and show that I'm relatable? Is it to try and book a client? Is it, so always remember when you're doing anything in marketing, ask yourself, why am I doing this? That'll save you a lot of time <laughs> and energy of then just like randomly throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. Um, I hear my kids screaming for me too. We'll see if you <laughs> hear anything. <laughs> I just heard mom. Um, yeah. So yeah. And then, like I said, that then goes to that trust portion where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm starting to like this person. And a big part of marketing is being able to sell yourself and 
what I like to remind people is it's like sales doesn't have to be this gross thing. If you actually like what you're doing and mm -hmm. you think it's important, then it's not a gross thing because then it just becomes a conversation. Like that's it. And so being able to talk about what you do with clarity and how it's going to benefit in present day, present day, how it's going to benefit the client is going to be gold. And then you're easy, you can easily be like, oh, so when do you want to book a session? Or, you know, you can ask for people to book. Okay. There's a big thing with being able to confidently put yourself out there and ask. Setting up, like I say, I, I think when it comes down to it, I, I posted that blog post about finding your voice and like how that is. And I mean that both with your photography as well as how you describe your photography and what it is you're doing, because all of that actually leads into the basis of your brand. Um, the basis of your brand, whether it's for putting your work out there in the art world or putting it out there for clients, um, you need to be able to build off of that. That's the foundation of pretty much everything you do in your business. Yeah. Every decision you make, like I said, who you work with, who you don't work with, um, and the other thing, I think one of the other big things to remember is, um, I know a lot of times as documentary family photographers, we're like, okay, I need to be paid, like actually legit paid to be doing this work. Cause it's hard. It takes a long time. <laughs> um, you know, how am I going to do that? And again, it goes back to knowing the value that you're bringing to families or to the people you're serving it doesn't necessarily have to be families. And, um, being able to, con um, with clarity, to let them see that the value in these kinds of things increases only over time. And that's where you get to talk about the future and instead of the present, right? Yeah. Um, there was something else I was going to tell you. Like, I should look at my, my bullet point list. That's very messy. Yeah. Um, Oh, one of the things I noticed, and I was actually going to write, I'm in this kick right now of like writing blog posts because I don't know, I think the last like two years for everyone has been just like crap, um, you know, with the lockdowns and everything like that. And we're all just crazy. And I'm finally like at this point, I'm like, I think people are at the point where they're ready to get back out there and start like working again. And I'm ready to start talking more and more about this stuff of like how I did it because I did a lot of, um, you know, like taking classes or doing this or doing that, but also a lot of mistakes. And what I found is there's no one right or wrong way. Like, so when we hear about like, this is the exact system you need to use to market yourself. It's not the case. There's no such thing. You have to find out what works for you. I think that with, with everything we do, it's more of a framework. So like I said, that basis of marketing, like what you need to know about marketing is those three steps of know, like, and trust. Like, how do I nurture each of those steps? Getting people to know I exist, getting them to like me, and then getting them to trust me. Oh, I hear a uh, little footsteps coming. <laughs> Hold on one second. Okay. And now my dad's going to start crying because the kids are going to the neighbor's house. Uh, yeah. So where was I? Oh, what I was going to say was one thing that I know, a big mistake that I made in the very beginning of my business was getting stuck in almost like this research mode and all these things that I could and should do. And like sit, sitting there and like researching things to death. And what I realized through that was that I was actually like, I had all these ideas. I knew they were all going to be great, but I was scared to actually take that step into action. I think that's my biggest thing is like confidently putting myself out there and like, actually like, that's what I'm looking for. Actually like moving forward with doing what I want to do just because I don't have the confidence in it. Yeah. No, that's, I think that's something super common. And when you look at, when you think about that, 
what my suggestion would be is to like really ponder on it and real, figure out what it is. Um, Amy just wrote, that's where, where she is too. Um, really ponder on it of what that block is. It's like, okay, I'm not having the confidence to do this. Is it because I don't feel my work's good enough? Is it because I'm scared to have people paying me money for this? And then I have responsibility. Um, is it come here Sunday? Sorry, my dog's crying because he wants to be by the kids. Um, is it because again, like for me, one of the biggest things was I was like, well, shit, if I start making money with this, then I'm like on the hook for all these other things like taxes and, and like, <laughs> like that felt so <laughs> overwhelming for me that I was like, I'm just going to stick in this mode where I can like research everything. And they all seem like good ideas. And I'm writing it down and pinning on my Pinterest board and like doing all these things <laughs> and never like moving forward and taking action. And, and finally, you know, you just get to this point where um, sometimes you need guidance to take action. Sometimes it's finding um, someone else, like a friend to keep you accountable for action but really drilling down on like, okay, this is what I want to do. And sorry, knowing that um, over time, that confidence builds and builds. And sometimes it's really just about having the courage. It's not necessarily about confidence because I think we all suffer from that, like imposter syndrome or like, I'm not good enough or you know, whatever it is, but saying that to yourself, and having the courage to do it anyway is all you can do. Yeah. But that's like all you can do in those situations. So yeah, I get it though. I mean, I still do it. Sometimes like, can you stop? Um, sometimes I have to, um, yeah, get myself out of that rut and like remind myself, like what's the, what's the worst that can happen? I like, it sounds kind of morbid, but I'm like, what's the worst that can happen? Okay. I put yeah. myself out there and like, okay, no one books. So that would mean I have to go back to the drawing board and figure out how to put myself out there a different way. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like there's always a way to go back and figure out how you could have done something differently or what you should be doing. Or like, oh, maybe I do need to improve a little bit more before I'm putting myself out there. Maybe that'll make me feel better. But oftentimes I feel like that progress over perfection yeah so even with with websites um I think one thing that I know my students often get caught up on is like it's not perfect yet and they still haven't launched their website yeah and that's so I started making a website last year um, <laughs> and I like I started it but I never finished it because I'm like I don't know how to do this like I'm not I'm not good at writing. Like that's my biggest downfall. I feel like, um, right. and like, so like I was just overthinking it, like in the sense of like, well, I don't know what to put for about me because I don't know how to like talk about myself like that, you know? And like, you know, so, I don't know what to, yeah, like, that's, you know, I think that's what a lot of people struggle with. So there's two things I want to let you know. The first is when you think of your website, think of what is the most important people the most important information people know um oh gosh i don't know <laughs> <laughs> well, your work yeah so they're gonna need to know like when they get on your site they need to know what you do where you're located um and they want to be able to see some pictures and they need to know how to book you okay and about portion is also obviously really good you want to be able to to put that in but again with with the about my, one of my biggest tips is first of all, and this again, actually it all goes back to branding, which is knowing your tone of voice of how you're writing. Um, for me, I write how I speak, which is really annoying for a lot of people, I'm sure, because it's always super long winded, <laughs> but I write how I speak. And, um, but some people are like, no, I want, I write actually more formally and more poetic. And that's fine too. Like just figuring out your tone, and when you write about your about me, it's like, what's the most important thing they know? Probably that you're a mother. So you've been around kids. Um, or even if maybe for people who don't have kids yet, it's like, I don't have kids, but I love to photograph kids for X, Y, Z reason um, or families for X, Y, Z reason. And your about me actually becomes more about them. Okay. So if you can find a story 
about yourself, again, that people are going to relate to maybe on this photography journey of like, I'm just going to use, I'm going to use an example that I've seen quite a bit on websites. So it's not necessarily the one you should use, <laughs> but I've seen a lot of websites. Um, but it's a good example of one is like, you know, when people start talking about their, how they got into photographing and it was, it's usually with the birth of their first child and they realize how quickly they're changing and they knew that they wanted to like really hold on to those memories and all of those things. And that's something people can relate to. It's telling a story about how um, you got started and how quickly kids change, right? Mm -hmm. So like I said, I've seen it a lot. So I would probably try and dig it a little bit deeper. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the other big thing is, um, you know, you're, what's unique to you, what's unique about you, you know, yeah. I have an advantage living in Germany that a lot of people just want to work with an American. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, that's so cool. You're from America. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you want a book? <laughs> <laughs> so but of course, I obviously have to have other unique things. Like that that, yeah. There's more Americans than just me <laughs> in my town. So yeah, I'm going to just check in here really quick. Okay. Can I help that, please? Let's see. <laughs> um, Paula wrote that she heard you can just tag at everyone now and they'll see it. She was obviously making a joke about my at everyone tag. That's funny, Paula. Uh, <laughs> I love it. So I feel like the fake authenticity can backfire. Look at my house. It's an example. She says, look at my house. Is it an exact, uh, an absolute disaster? Meanwhile, a potential client may think she thinks that's messy. Mine is much worse. We're not a good fit. Yep, exactly. Um, Daniel Adams says that he has launched an imperfect website. Good job. That's the way to do it. Just put it out there. Paula also said that she's scared of crazy clients because I hear so many cool stories. So I'll touch on that really quick. Um, with crazy clients, that's okay. <laughs> um, the way you're going to protect yourself from cra cra crazy clients is having boundaries in place and letting them know. So like, I'm a big believer in great customer service. Like I love going that extra mile for my clients. I love doing all of that stuff, but I have boundaries and they know it's my business and I, I make the rules. And if I'm going to bend the rules, it's going to be to my discretion, not because I was strong armed into bending them. And so in order to avoid those crazy clients, it's about over communication. So really setting expectations up front um, it's about having policies and procedures in place, as well as a really good contract. Um, those are knock on wood, which I'm going to literally do right now. I've been very lucky with my clients. All of my clients have become friends, like people, you know, I would go have coffee with, even if I'm not photographing their family. Um, that's the other big thing about marketing in an ideal, the ideal version of marketing is you get all these people in your pipe, pipeline and they're coming in and you have this group of clients and you have repeat clients and then referral, referral clients. So the people who have worked with you then start referring you to their friends, their family, coworkers, et cetera. And usually if it's clients you like, the people that they're surrounding themselves with are going to you know, have kind of a similar, at least, you know, they're hopefully not going to be friends with a bunch of a-holes. So, um, but basically the ideal version of marketing, and this is how my marketing worked before the pandemic hit. Now I'm going to have to like get out there and pound the streets again, I'm sure. But um, I had my marketing up to a point where all of my work, all of any new client came in was a referral. And the rest of my year was booked out through repeat clients. So for me, I'm like, ah, I am because of the amount of repeat clients I have, I only need to get six new clients a year. Like I've done the calculation. And with those six new clients, 
then they're referring their friends. And then every year I just need six new clients because I know that, and it's not necessarily that they're booking me every single year, but usually every second year. And so it's almost like I have this alternating client list. Like, oh, I know this year I'm working with these families and next year I'm working with these and I'll have six new families coming in. Um, so I was able to do that by doing different marketing activities. And do, do you do um, email campaigns to get those, the marketing going on that? Like, do you keep their emails and then send out blast about what's going on or what so, things you have coming up or how do you get them to book? Both or all, uh, yes, yes and no. I'm okay. going to be honest. I am a lazy emailer. Okay. Um, I do not write a ton of, like, I'm not doing it like every two weeks. Like, you know, for me, I, again, I was also at a point where I could send out emails quarterly and be okay. Um, so usually what I'll do is, and when I'm emailing, it's not always to offer them a session necessarily. It's sometimes it's like informational, like, Hey, did you guys see that there's this really cool interactive kids exhibit in town? I took the boys there and like, I'll show photos of my kids there. We had this amazing exhibit take place in the like concert hall here. Um, and it was literally body parts, but like huge and like how the body parts worked and like you could touch and, you know, it was really interesting. Um, my kids really loved, um, the, um, genital, ex uh, ex part of the exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> where they could look at those anyways, beside the point. So what I did is I went there with my kids, took pictures. And then I was like, you know what? I bet you a lot of my clients would like to go to this with their kids too. And so I sent an email saying, Hey, just so you know, like we stumbled upon this exhibit, blah, blah, blah. You guys should go there and bring the kids. It was a lot of fun. And I just added in a few photos of my, my boys enjoying themselves there and being silly and climbing all over the different things. And I actually had someone, I didn't even say like, Hey, book a session on that email. I just showed it. And I actually had someone say, Oh my God, I want a session there. Like, and then book me to go have a session at that exhibit. Um, I would say an email list is really good because it does keep you in their mind. And, but there's other ways to keep in their mind too. So like, I'm a big believer in um, like, I all for all of my clients, kids' birthdays, or if they don't, I do have clients that don't have kids. Like just because someone doesn't have kids doesn't mean they're not a family. And so if they don't have kids, then I have their birthdays, but I, I collect the kids' birthdays and I send like a birthday card, you know, stuff like that. It doesn't have to be anything big. It's just keeping in the forefront of their mind. Another big thing is remembering if you're selling products, whether that be inclusive in your price or selling them um, separately from that, the session fee, <clears throat> them seeing those products is also a big reminder of, Hey, we need to call Ash. It's been a year since two years since our last photo session or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I would say, like I said, Melissa there with the emails and things like that, send them, um, when you can, and just make sure that it's a mix of things that are, is like valuable information, or it can be simple, like up, updates, like, um, you know, whatever about you, like, oh, just so you know, like I'm, I got a new album that I'm starting to offer my clients, you know, and it's not necessarily saying like, book me right now. It's saying, Hey, look at this new album. It's really cool. Maybe you embed a, a video into the email or something like that. I don't know. Um, but it's a mix of those things. You know, sometimes I'll just send my clients a quick text and like, oh, I was just thinking about you, wanted to check in and see how you guys are doing. And I am being genuine. It's not like I'm just doing this to like sell them on a session, but it's gotten them to the point, like I said, I feel like we're friends and then they pay me money. <laughs> uh, that sounds bad, That's a good place to be. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. Um, Amy asked here, have you ever used an ambassador approach and do you give referral discounts? Um, so first the ambassador approach, I have not, um, well, I mean, technically I guess referral, like having a referral program is an ambassador approach. And I do have an, a, a excuse me, a referral program. I also have a, 
a um, client, God, I'm, I'm sorry, all of my marketing stuff is in German. So I'm always translating it in my head. Like first I translate it from English to German and now I'm having to translate it back from German to English. A um, client loyalty program. So clients that come in year after year or like, you know, continuously book me, they know that they're getting um, more from me for a, like better value or whatever. Um, I do. Do you give them a discount? How does that work? So usually what I'll do is I'll give them like extras, you know, extra, okay. extra prints or um, it could be a number of things. Sometimes it might be extra. Sometimes it might be like, oh, I'll stay an extra hour. It could be anything. Obviously you should, when we hear from typical photography mentors, I'm not, Melissa knows this. She can, and Cookie too. Both of them are, have been my students. Um, you know, I always call myself the hot mess express. Like I, I'm, I have a messy brain. Yes. I'm a hot mess express. And so I do, like I said, I have framework and things that I do to help myself to make sure I stay consistent and things like that. But I do not agree at all with any mentor that will tell you, this is the way to do this only this way. I think that, um, being able to say, this is how I do it. Here's a couple other options of how to do it. You need to see which one fits for you. And we can work through that together, um, is the best kind of mentor. Because like, for me, I remember when I first figured out my pricing and I wanted to do it one way. And then I was told like, no, you can't do it that way. Like, this is the way to do it. And I tried that way. And it literally just did not work in my market. And I was like, I'm going back to what I know. Like <laughs> I'm going back to my other way. So I think being able to present different options. Um, and sometimes that's how it is with like a referral program is seeing what your, or a, um, why do I keep forgetting the loyalty, word? Loyalty. Client loyalty. loyalty program is seeing what works with your clients, what they like. And a lot of that has to do with market research and asking them like, Hey, did you like it better that I stayed an extra hour? Or do you want a couple extra prints? You know, there's no harm in asking what they prefer. Um, the one thing I will say is that when it comes to having a referral, um, a referral program is that you do need to be strategic about that in terms of how it works. And you need to let your client, like you need to deliver that system to them or that framework to them. So they know, so like, Oh, here, let, let me show you how it works. It's really easy. Um, you refer Jen, Jen comes to me, you get an, a free hour on your session next time. And Jen, if, when she books, she gets 10% off her products, whatever, right. You need, but you need to literally tell them exactly what they need to do. Okay. Otherwise they'll have it and they're like, Oh, okay, cool. Oh, you know, maybe like, yeah, one day. Um, there was something else I was going to say that I was thinking about that I know is really important. Oh, portfolio building. <laughs> One of the biggest things too, is not being afraid to and do it every year is having a few clients as portfolio building clients and having them, you know, kind of get into your referral. A lot of my portfolio building clients turned into actual paying clients. Um, but the reason for that too, is you take it out on your marketing budget, right? When you set your budget for the year for your business and, um, you know, being able to work with other people or, um, try new skills or like whatever it is, whatever your reason is for doing a portfolio build that year. Um, but I think one of the biggest things you can do, especially when first starting out in business is get a lot of portfolio building clients. And that was something we did, Melissa, in the program together was you guys got to photograph, you know, this variety of people. And so you're showing up with this portfolio showing like diversity and diverse situations and all of these different things to walk away with. And I think that's really important to keep. I'm still doing that. Yeah. I like, do portfolio. I do at least three, two to three a year. Yeah. Because a lot of my clients don't want their stuff on social media or website. None of, my, none of my clients do. So I just use the portfolio stuff specifically for all of my marketing. Yeah. Yeah. In Germany. And I think in a lot of Europe, 
people are very, very private about what goes online. And so I would say 98% of my clients' photos, I can't share. Like, I just can't. And so I had to get creative with how I can um, do that. And one of those ways is portfolio building. The other way is um, offering a discounted price for people who do allow me to share their photos to use for my marketing. So not punishing them, not saying if I can't use your photos, then you have to pay an extra $200, but rewarding them. So that means pricing yourself in a way that you cushion that $200 and then you can easily take it off and say, yeah, if you let me use them online, I'll give you 200 bucks off, whatever, if you want to make money from that session. Um, but otherwise it's the portfolio building for sure. I'm going to just slap over to the Facebook group real quick. And see if it, the Facebook comment thing always makes me nervous because um, it doesn't always show up in real time. Like sometimes I get off these things and then there's like 20 comments I didn't see while we were on. Yeah, Gabriella says that's what email automation is for. Exactly. So like, again, in an ideal world, you will have all these emails set up um, where you know, someone gets onto your email list and you have this automation going through that is warming them up. So when anyone comes on your email list initially, um, we consider it like a cold lead, right? They're not like, they don't really know much yet. And so what email can do is warm them up to you and it gets them from that no point to the like point. And then after you've nurtured that for a while, it turns to that trust. I always think of it as like, going on a blind date with someone. <laughs> so like, you're not going to go on a blind date and then the next day get married. I mean, maybe some people do, but it doesn't often work out. Um, so what you have to do is it starts out as a blind date. They're like, oh, well, they're pretty or, you know, they, they seem nice. And then the more they, that you warm them up, um, the more they start to like you. Right. And then at that point you can propose marriage and <laughs> ask them to book a session. So you can create email automation uh, quite easily with MailChimp, or I know some people use ConvertKit or God, there's so many out there now. What was the other one? Flowdesk, I think is another really, I like their design on Flowdesk. Um, I personally use MailChimp for my stuff simply because I'm not very good with change um, and I'm scared to use anything else. So I have a question about MailChimp. Sure. So I have all these magazine clients that I have their emails for, and I, this is like years of this and I never asked them, you know, can I put you on an email list? Should I just go ahead and put them in there? And then is there a way for them to opt out? Always. Yeah. And let them know in that email, like if, especially if it's the first email, Yeah, you can let them know like, Hey, just so you know, you know, I have everyone on my list so that they can keep up to date with what's going on. Um, but if you don't want to receive these emails in the future, you can hit the unsubscribe button at the bottom. Also tell them, I promise you, I'm not going to bombard you with three emails a day. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that. Okay. Um, I think that's, that's not, that's not unheard of for people. No, though. no. Okay. And so in Europe, it's going to be a little bit different because we have different privacy laws. And so we have to actually um, have confirmation that from the person that we can put them on our email list. Um, and so, you know, we have to work that different and it's the same. I mean, with my clients, any client I get, or even like I said, if I photograph at the kid's school or whatever, I let them know, just so you know, you'll be on my email list and um, you can request to be off at any time. And I let them know before he, excuse me, I'm hiccuping okay. as usual. Um, okay. Let me look at my little list. So I had biz cards always more than just a single strategy. So again, not just online, not just email marketing, not just um, I know showing up at trade shows all the time, it should be a, 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 a mix of different things. Um, be able to clearly talk about what you do, how you do it and why it, why they should care, right? Why should anyone care that you're doing this? Um, understand how marketing works. Again, it's a long game. So that means one of the biggest things that you can do for yourself to see what marketing efforts are working 
is when a client inquires, even if they book or not, find out how they found you. Always. So you can say, okay, is it my SEO that's doing really good? Is it my Instagram stuff? Was it the flyers I put in the pediatrician's office? So that you can figure out like, where should I be spending more of my time to get more of these in inquiries? Um, let's see. Making sure that they understand that you're like the most qualified to offer this service to them. And the, the way you can find that again is going back to that blog post about voice is you're the most qualified to do this for them because of the reason that you're photographing, right? Looking at that purpose. And again, it can't be, oh, I just find beautiful in the mundane. It has to be something unique to you. Um, let's see. And I have on here in an ideal world, everything comes from referrals. Oh, I wanted to point out um, that it actually costs you more to get a new client than it does to retain a client and to get a client based on referral. So keep that in mind when, you know, as you're looking at, okay, because I think a lot of times what we do as business owners, that's a huge mistake, is we forget about the clients we've already had or that we do already have. And so they get kind of left and put to the wayside. And we're always focused on like, oh, I got to bring in new clients, got to bring in new clients. But if we nurture our old clients as well, um, that's going to be really beneficial for getting those referrals into us and for getting those people to rebook. Um, and it costs less energy and less time. So um, I have on here website. We talked about that. Um, I think that's it on my checklist. Do any of you have any more questions before I go to the Facebook group? No. I'm just going to look at one more thing. Hold on. I have one more little list here with. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I told you. Really got my system. Here we go. Um, okay. Yeah. So the three points of no like trust get off social media and out into your community. And then always asking why before you do something. So again, one of the biggest mistakes I see my students make when they first come to me is they're just doing things because they've seen other people do them. So um, yeah, being able to be strategic about why you're doing things means you ask yourself, why am I doing this? What do I hope to get out of this? And, you know, Marketing is all about setting a goal for yourself, figuring out what that goal is, and then working backwards. And like, this is how you make basically your marketing work is you set your goal of what you want it to be. So maybe it's to get people to know I exist and you need to figure out what do I need in order for that to happen? So I need business cards. I need a website. I need to get out into my community and show people I exist. How am I going to get out into my community? Well, I could try and ask the doctor's office if I can put put photos in there. I could maybe photograph the a preschool. I could, you know, like whatever, make less and then figure out exactly what you need to do and need to have for each of those items. And then maybe your next goal would be, okay, book four clients by March, 2023, just to get kind of going. And okay, what do I need to do to make sure that happens? Okay. Now I need to nurture these people that I'm already getting in contact with, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, like I said, it's a process, it's a long game, but once you get it going, it um, basically runs itself until a pandemic hits and then <laughs> you have to start over, not start over, but you know, you have to get yourself kind of back out there and to let people know like, hey, I'm doing this now. Okay, let's see, I'm just, Let's see, good way to put it. Mailer Light, Gabrielle, um, Gabriella Hunt suggested Mailer Light for a um, email automation service. And then average time to see <clears throat> results from marketing, she says is six to 12 months. And I agree with that. Um, yeah, for me, I, I, in the beginning, for sure, six to 12 months. Now it's at, well, I keep saying now, like 
again, I, we weren't just through a pandemic, but for me, it got to the point where I knew if I put out some kind of like call for clients, like, Hey, I'm booking up my calendar for 2023. I could have my calendar booked out easily six, seven months in advance. So, and that's how I was always working was if people knew if they wanted to book again, this is pre pandemic. I'm going to have to get to that point again, it's a little process, but people knew if they wanted to book that they were looking at a six to seven month wait time. And so for them, they were like, oh, I need to get on Ash's books now. And that doesn't mean I wouldn't squeeze people in if there's something like really important happening or whatever. Sure, I, I would do that. But um, for the most part, I tried in order to set those boundaries for myself and only take on, you know, four clients a month, um, then I would book out that six six months in advance. You are cute. <laughs> Hi, cutie. Did anyone else have questions? Okay. Well, I hope uh, that I, I have a question. Has anybody yeah. used the um the car, the business cards that you just tap on people's phones? And like then is it with a QR code or is it? It's, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't think so. You take the card and you basically just, you know, whoever's interested in your work, say just, it's, this is their phone. Mm -hmm. You just take it and you tap it and then it automatically pulls up. Maybe it is a QR code. It pulls up all their info. They're expensive, but you only need like one right. for yourself or for whoever, maybe your husband, if he's helping marketing yeah, does it does it save your info in their phone then I'm wondering or is it just pulling up your website I don't know it pulls up sure. all whatever social media and website that you have mm -hmm. and then I guess from there they can explore I don't know that it oh, okay. saves it like on right. there yeah that would be my only thing with like it, like I would hope it would save it so that mm -hmm. um so when they walk away from yeah, me, like in case you don't lose it. Yeah, exactly. Because I know how I am. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, I have 500 tabs open. Just close all at once. You know, right, <laughs> right. So that's a good. Yeah. That's a good question. If if it saves the info, I think that's great. If not, you know, I almost feel like a combination of both would be good. I'm, you know, I try and be really conscious of like conscience, conscience, conscience. Why can't I say that conscience? conscientious of uh, how much paper I use and stuff, but I am a big believer still in like some of the old school marketing methods of having things in your hand makes kind of a bigger impact. Yeah. Um. So I think a mix of both could also be good because I know for me, like I'll take a business card from something. I'm like, oh, this looks interesting or whatever. And then I'll forget about it. And then I'll find it in my wallet like a month later. And I'm like, oh yeah, I wanted to look at this, you know? Whereas with my phone, I mean, I have photos, like so many photos stored on there that sometimes like if I, I'll, what I do is like, let's say in, I'll see like an ad pop up on Instagram or whatever, and I'll take a screenshot and like, I'll look into this later. Maybe don't yeah. look at that moment. I never go back to the screenshot. I always forget about it. I'm sure I have some pretty weird screenshots in my phone <laughs> from like midnight scrolling, like half asleep. And shopping. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I don't, like I said, I think a combination would be good. Um, yeah. I think everyone's different what they need. You know, some people are more like, yes, I do everything electronically. I don't want your paper, but mm -hmm. yeah, I like paper. Just when curious. I, some things. I think it could be a good idea, especially if you, you know, don't have your business cards on you all the time or like yeah, yeah like you said, I, I just leave them all over. Like, you know, I, ha I alternate between different bags. Like I have my camera bag. I have my, a backpack I wear all the time. And then I have a, like a purse. And so in each of those bags, I have like a stack of business cards in the pocket. So I always have no matter which bag I'm using and then same thing in my car and you know, wherever. Okay. I'm going to look on Facebook really quick. Um, yeah, so 
Oh, Daniel just posted the link, ovou.com, I guess for the smart business cards. Thank you, Paula. I am glad it's being helpful. Um, so Michelle uh, said, I've asked for reviews after sessions and people don't write them. Even when I've asked uh, friends, I photograph, how do you get clients to write a review? Uh, I This is also a problem I run into myself. Um, so a couple of ways you can incentivize it. So like, if you don't mind tell me, telling me about your experience, um, you know, it helps me. You can, I think also explain to them why you want the review. Like it helps me to improve my process as well as to, you know, I'm a small business and be able to use your review on my website or whatever it is. And like, if you do this, you can start with incentivizing it with like, oh, I'll give you a free print or, um, you know, whatever it is. Um, you know, it's, I think about what's hard with reviews is that I think about myself. I always am putting myself in client shoes and like, I'm going to give an example. I just tried one of those meal delivery boxes where they like send all the fresh ingredients along with the, um, recipes. And then you cook meals for your family from that. And like, they've been in, they've emailed me, I think like four times, like, please rate our service, you know? And I'm always like, I never even opened the email. So I'm thinking, even if I like some, and I liked, I really liked it. It's not that I didn't. People are more apt to write a review if they didn't like it than if they are. So I think, like I said, incentivizing it. I'm trying to think what would get me to write a review. The other thing is, is when you're delivering products, if you're delivering products and you're getting their reaction, you can ask to record them like on your phone, the reaction of them seeing the photographs. Um, to get those words. And then you can either post the reaction or literally transcribe the words and write them on your website. Um, the other thing is, is a review can be simply what they're stating to you verbally, right? So if they said, oh my gosh, this was seriously, this captured our family exactly how we are. Oh, I'm going to cherish these forever. Like whatever they say, you can use those words and put them on your website. Right. I mean, you can tell them like, oh, can I put that on my website? It'd just be like cute about it. Um, and I'm sure people will say yes. They're like, no, do not tell anyone. I will cherish, cherish them forever. <laughs> no one should know. Um, yeah. So I think that's a good way. I, I reviews, like I said, they're hard to get. And I think, I think it's just because we're all so busy. It could also just be a matter of, you know, really trying to find the process for it, maybe uh, that would be hard because they need to be able to see the photos first. I was going to say, maybe you ask for a review before you give them the products or the photos, but they need to see the photos to give the review, right? So I don't know. Let me think about that one on trying to get them. Um, I usually am just, like I said, I'm sneaky and I write um, down what people say to me. Or a lot of times you, it may not need to be like a submission, like a form or like something really formal. Maybe it could just be like you send an email following up after the session, like, hey, it was so amazing seeing your family. Um, I really enjoyed the session. I hope you're enjoying the photos. Have you gotten them hung up yet? Um, and then say, what do you think? Or what did you think of the experience together? And I'm sure they'll respond to that email. They don't want to leave you hanging. And you can maybe take snippets from what they write back to you. They're like, it's hung, but it's crooked. <laughs> no. um, you know, it could be any of those things. I'll have to think about that and get creative with it. Yeah. But reviews are important. I mean, we need um, to show authority. One of, that's another thing with marketing is like, the, with awards or like being able to exhibit your work. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't see the point necessarily. The one thing it does is does give authority of like, oh, okay, they're an award-winning photographer or, oh, they had their work exhibited or, oh, they're, they rank number, blah, blah, blah. And it's not necessarily that they are, the client is going to un understand the difference between a, an award-winning photograph versus a really good photograph. Um, but they will understand like, oh, they are, they have prestige. Like they, they actually are getting their work out there and it's being shown, you know? 
Um, and people want that. They want to be able to work with people that have that kind of authority on the market. Um, okay. So Tanae said, I live in a small area that does not offer documentary photography. Lifestyle is barely making headway here. I intermingle documentary and lifestyle images during every session, but headway feels slow. I do my best to prep clients and tell them what to do, but any suggestions on how to create awareness and build documentary clientele in an area that is used to traditional portraiture? Um, thanks for bringing this up because I meant to hit on it as well. Um, Oh, I'll get to that in a second, Michelle, sorry. But so first things first is you need to, if you really want to only be shooting documentary, you need to only be showing documentary on your website and on your social media, et cetera, um, and really just set that boundary. And it could be that you still will give them, you know, a little bit of time of posing or, you know, guided whatever, like 15 minutes, you can let them know that, but you're not showing any of that work on your website or wherever you're showing your photos, like on your marketing pamphlet or whatever. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is going to be, again, I think this is going to have to do with portfolio building. So if you're really in this situation, <clears throat> you're going to have to find some por portfolio building clients that are going to let you do your thing. You explain to them like the process, which is I'm just here hanging out as a friend, um, you know, and I'm making photographs of your life. Right. And you can talk to them. You can uh, like, for me, if I notice a client is posing like, you know, a, an adult specifically, I'll tell them, you don't have to do that. Remember I'm here. Like you can give them subtle reminders be like, stop looking at me like that, Jake, Jake, <laughs> stop it. But you can give them subtle reminders. I think that's totally fine. And it's going to be about finding um, and building a really great portfolio with documentary work. So people can really get what you're doing. If you still want to offer lifestyle work, that's fine. Um, but then you should, you know, you're going to probably run into that where people aren't loosening up as much. Um, and that's the other reason that I say with document, I, my feeling is, is you can shoot anything, any length of session in a documentary approach. I have done 15 minute mini sessions, breastfeeding mini sessions in the documentary approach. Okay. Does that mean they are going to give you access the way they would if you were there for three, four, five, six hours? No. So it's just having that in mind. I know when I'm going to my two hour shoots, my clients are going to be a little more stiff than my clients at my four hour shoots, because after two hours, they're loosening up. It's just keeping that kind of thing in mind um, and being okay with it. And again, over communicating. So, um, you know, having your email ready that says, you know, when you're coming the next day or whatever, or if it's text that you do or a phone call and just say, don't forget you don't have to do anything special. I'm there to just hang out with you. Like you just do your normal thing. We don't do any poses. This is your life and I will document it, you know? So it's a lot of reminding um, and over, again, over educating the client. Um, hold on, I was gonna go back. So Michelle said she was thinking for things like Yelp and Google. Um, I would just create a bunch of fake email addresses and give myself reviews. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. I'm totally joking. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I think you'll have to try and incentivize it and say, hey, if you leave me a review, I'll send you a print. Or, hey, if you leave me a review, I will be your best friend. I don't know. I would think you're going to have to incentivize it because, I, like I said, I'm sure you're gonna have to make it easy for them. And I would ask more than once. So like in person, after you've delivered the photos or, you know, however you're doing the process or when you're leaving the session, be like, I'm gonna need you to go on Google when this is all said and done. And I need you to give me a review, please. Because that's how my business survives, right? There's nothing wrong with being honest. I think people understand nowadays how small business works and just ask what you want from them. And then- Again, don't be afraid to follow up. So um, 
you know, sending that email saying, I really enjoyed your family. Can you do me a huge favor? Take five minutes and just give me this review on Google. If it's going to be less than five stars, don't leave. No, <laughs> um, my Google review is all messed up because I have one of my Google reviews. It says one star and someone's like, where are you located? I'm like, what the fuck? And I disputed it with Google and they never responded or whatever. Literally, I was complaining about it to my mom like two and a half years later. This happened recently. I was complaining to my mom, like, I'm so mad. My Google review, I have this one star and it's just someone who I never worked with asking me where I'm located. And, um, and I, and then like, seriously, 24 hours later, the, I got an email from Google saying, oh, we've adjusted your reviews. Um, you know, your disputed review. So now it's fixed. I'm like two and a half years later, are you listening to my phone call with my mom? <laughs> it was the weirdest thing anyways. Um, but yeah, so I would, again, don't, don't be ashamed to ask for what you need from them. Um, multiple times. So I'm not saying harass them like after the session with a bunch of emails over and over, but you can mention it at the session, mention it again when you deliver the photos and then follow up with an email. And then if you don't hear back after the email, then follow up with one more email and say, hey, I'd really love it. Um, yeah. And then tell them their family is magnificent or something like that. That always makes people feel good. Okay, let me see if anything else came over. Um, I think I got everything. Do my Zoomers have any more questions? I hope, I hope that was help, helpful to you. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I learned a lot. Um, just because I've not really know what to do in general. So um, yeah, that's a motivation. Yeah, like I said, it's, don't be afraid um, to that, you know, it takes time. And so don't, what I mean by don't be afraid is like, don't, don't start getting really discouraged. If you're not getting a bunch of clients at once, you have to, again, cast this net and think about like, how am I going to make this work? And um, yeah, what else? I think that's, that's it. Like I said, I could talk marketing all day. Um, there's so many things like things that you can do and ways to do it, but just on the basis, I think the biggest thing when you start marketing is making sure you have your voice figured out. Like I talked about in that blog post and in the email, as well as, because from there you can figure out your brand and everything you do is dependent on how your brand set up. But if you want to have a website and stuff like that set up in the meantime, do it like have something there for at least people to go to mm -hmm. um i mean or on your instagram i i didn't get a chance to check out your instagram echo but since we did this all yeah. woo, on the fly <laughs> quick and yeah. dirty quick and dirty um but what i was going to say is i don't know if in your bio you have contact me for a session like send me a message for a session like you need to tell people what they need to do always okay. Like, don't oh, be afraid. afraid. I've really, just been using my personal Instagram, but I mean, like, obviously, I need to have a business Instagram and put that out there. Yeah, I mean, or you can you can still use your personal one as a mix business. Like, I think that's no problem at all. Um, if you're comfortable with it, I mean, it's up to you. Some people are like, no, I don't want to mix the two. But for me, uh -huh. I'm like, I can't have. I started it that way, and then I my business account I just keep my my personal um yeah I struggle with that because mom. the reason I was using my mom. personal is because I have mom. so many more followers on mom. that not all of them are local but mom. a good chunk of them are local mom. whereas my business when I have 100 mom. followers mom. and my mom. my personal I have like 900 followers so I was like mom I started off using my mom. business and then I kind of deleted everything because it was just not getting any what you wanted there yeah then stay on your personal, if it doesn't bother you, I mean, stay on your personal and again, tell people what to do. It, same thing with when you're posting something, you know, you should be asking for some kind of reaction or like, what are your thoughts or can you relate or, <coughs> you know, whatever it is, uh -huh. um, asking for some kind of engagement. But I think that's something we need to remember is that 
not everyone necessarily feels comfortable reaching out in the DMs Mm -hmm. unless they're invited to do that. Yeah. Right. So invite people to do that. Like if you want to book a session, uh, reach out my DMs or email me with your email. I wouldn't put my email address on there, but you know, email me or DM me for my email address or something. Right. Mm -hmm. Tell them what they have to do. It's um, how it works. That makes sense. Good. Anything else? Um, I don't have any further questions, no. So okay. Echo, will you write your, will you put your um, Instagram account in in the notes so we can follow you? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I encourage you. Sure. Echo, where are you located? Did you say Omaha? Um, Omaha, Nebraska, yeah. Okay. So any photographers in Omaha that want to... <laughs> <laughs> their photos done won a little competition no I'm just kidding <laughs> um yeah okay perfect I think that's it okay so they're saying do more lives I am I'm gonna try and get on more lives more often like I said I was like for the past two years I've been in a funk with all the pandemic stuff but now I'm feeling really inspired to do this. So I thank you so much for letting me go on live with you, Echo. And like yeah, you thanks for having me. and thank you for joining us to Melissa and Cookie, uh, who's Christy. I know people are like, why is she calling that one lady Cookie? <laughs> She's Cookie to me. Um, and Amy, who Amy jumped off already. And yeah, I hope it was helpful. If any other questions come up, you can write in the group. And like I said, I'll try and do more lives. And if anyone else has questions, you can write to me, DM me, hit me up and (laughs) slide into my DMs, slide on in there. Um, And if you want to give us a review on Yelp, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Ash. Bye. Right. Bye guys. Oh, wait, I want to mention one thing or two things okay. really quick, but I should mention this. We have a flash sale happening now. I mentioned contracts and how it's important for your boundaries. If you want a contract, get it now because the flash sale is like less than 24 hours left. Um, I wanted to mention that because that's seriously a really important thing with working with clients, flash yes. sale contracts. And then also if you want to uh, dig deeper into marketing and branding and all that stuff, Join me for no more fucking around. Which I can attest is great. Yeah. I mean, we did it during COVID, so it took on a whole new form. But it was literally, but um, but it was wonderful. And I still haven't gotten through all the material. (laughs) And the business material in particular. Yeah, the business material. (laughs) There's Um, a lot. But it but it is great. And Echo, that might really help you to kind of get focused and you know, I know you've got a lot of kids running around, so I know that's, that's a challenge as well. Um, yeah. But it will help you get focused and stay focused and kind of get things in order um, so that you can figure out what to attack first. Because I know this is um, very overwhelming for you at the spot that you're in now. Yeah, um, I was there seven years ago and it's, you know, it's very overwhelming. So just, you mm-hmm. know, baby steps and, and little bites. Yep. And One thing at a time. You, it'll it'll all My work out cookie. cookie was in there too and she did great um yes so just wanted to mention that anyone want to join us me kirsten lewis and jenna Schuldice for a year and not fuck around but also fuck around because we laugh all the time and stuff then uh slide into my dms <laughs> all right thank you ladies so much and we'll see oh. you soon all right bye, bye. bye.